Hello everyone and welcome. Today's tutorial is going to be about exporting photos in Adobe Lightroom 5. So let's hop over here and get started. Okay. The photo you see here is the one we're going to be exporting today and I'm going to show you if multiple ways to export in Adobe Lightroom. Now we're over here in the library module and there's a file export option up here that you can also use for its catalog preset previous but for this one we're just going to cover the regular export but the features that were within it that may you know kind of confuse people from time to time so let's click on the regular export button okay now we are exporting to the hard drive which is where most people do export things to okay we're exporting to a specific folder and for this particular one I have it set to folder users you know my name and on the desktop but I do have it put in another subfolder you know which I'm gonna call photo tutorial okay for the file naming here I had to have my own custom settings set up now let's go over this now you can have a custom name with a uh, X and Y would be like you number know, uh, one of ten, two of ten of that nature. You can have custom name and original file number. But one I do normally use a lot is you know custom name and sequence. This particular one is very good if you go in like you know time lapse, then you go up one, two, three, and so on, which is very good when you're doing time lapses to keep all your uh, files in a correct order but for this one I'm going to show you what I've got set up what I have is a custom text I'll move this out of the way which is set up for Exodus photography now I do this because I have multiple cameras and sometimes it's hard to keep up file names on each and every one of them then I have it set up my date I have a four year date with I mean four year, uh, four number year you know two digit month and two digit day and you'll set up then the original file name which this particular file name is uh, image you know 6612 so it comes extra photography the date and the file name now the reason I do this a lot of times is it's pretty hard to confuse when you have a date and a file name to get them mixed up you know with any other existing files and stuff but if you have just the original file name I've noticed when you have two or three cameras you can end up with the same you know file name over and over and it messes a lot of things up so putting the date in there really helps but I'm gonna click now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, remove these and show you how to add them okay now the first thing to do is uh, let's go over here is get your custom text and that's down at the bottom which I'm gonna insert now right after that I'm gonna put a space and a hyphen and a space again then I want my date All right, you can change this they get many different you have Julian day but you can go up here to four year which I got and then it inserts it right in now right after that get them put another space another hyphen another space now I want the original file name it's already selected so just hit insert then click done okay further down we have these other uh, file settings you can use JPEG PSD TIFF DNG or original now for what I've been uh, using for the most part is I'm just using JPEG standard you know, it's a, a standard uh, generic RGB you know there's nothing really spectacular about it and that's you know, I've been exporting a lot of these JPEGs as for pretty much because they're, it's more compatible across the web. And you get a, a quality slider here. Now I'm going to leave this at 100% because this particular one, when I do export it, I'm going to be using it for another tutorial and I need the image quality to be at 100% because I'll be selling the photo. So if you're selling, that's what I recommend. Now, if you're just doing this for like, uh, put on Facebook, and you got a slow internet connection then you might want to pull this down to something like say 50 or 60 which is still great for like Facebook stuff 
and that way you're not losing much quality because the picture's going to be small anyway. But if you're going to sell something, you just the highest quality. Now, the website I'm uploading to is uh, DeviantArt, and they take the JPEGs and stuff. So, even JPEGs still going to be pretty a large si file size, you know, and take a while with my slow internet connection here. But here's something that really gets a lot of people is image sizing and more so resolution okay and I really do not like the way Adobe has done this Adobe has this setup where you have the option to change the resolution at the same time allowing you to change the dimensions you know file size long edge you know short edge or the total megapixels now I really really not happy with this and I'll explain why because if I use width and height you know I can change this over to inches and under width and height you know I can change say if I want say it says 3.33 by height of 12 inches right here resolution 300 now you might want to go up to higher say 480 or even up to 720 on some printers if you're using this you know in inches because this is pixels per inch and a lot of your print people do use this you know if we're doing like a 5 or 7 or well, actually this image is actually should be a say a 4 by 6 And then you can easily bring this up to say 800. Now what this is going to do is it's going to put in 800 uh, pixels every four inches, every one inch across. So this will give this uh, and six inches. So let's pull up our calculator right quick here. Now we'll do a little math. You know, four, you know, times 800 pixels equals 3,200. And six times eight hundred equals forty eight hundred. So say forty eight hundred times thirty two hundred equals about mm, see, just a little, looks like just a little over a fifteen megabit file. Okay. So then you know that's pretty large. But by default, it has 240 here. And people think, man, you know, I need high resolution. However, most people use either dimensions, you know, or like long edge here, but have it stuck on pixels. And they got like a file so here, you know, that they're going to upload and say like, uh, about 800 for, you know, Facebook photo. Now the catch is, in my honest opinion, at this point, you're telling it, hey, on the long edge, you want 800 pixels. Okay. So, that's going to say 800 pixels from this corner of the image to this corner of the image. If you look at my mouse cursor here at the top. And that's really going to drive a lot of people mad because you still got this option for resolution. But at this point, when you choose in pixels over here on your dimensions, the resolution here does not matter. Absolutely does not matter whatsoever. Because this image will come out at 960 by 800 pixels always. Now, what you, whatever you print it onto, if you blow it up too big, you know it could look very blotchy or if you can press it down small say about this probably wallet size this is still gonna look you know fantastic but this is what drives me crazy because a lot of people have questions about this they're like hey what resolution should I use if I'm already kicking out an image at say let's say on you know 1920 here and yeah, I was just doing this long edge which is I'm going to choose a 1920 it's like, hey, what should I use here? You know, that's pretty much already a, you know, 
you know, a file that can fit across the monitor for your website, you know, for your web page here or your computer background, excuse me, your wallpaper. You know, what resolution should I use? You know, honestly, at this point, it doesn't matter if you put one in there or 1,000. Because resolution is not used whatsoever when using image sizing when you have pixels chosen. Though we should, in my honest opinion, and hopefully they'll do this in uh, Lightroom 6, gray the whole resolution mass out right here completely when pixels is chosen here. Because the only time this is even used, let me put this back at, say, you know, 300. The only time this is actually used is when you're in inches. And this gives you a great idea. See, 1920 inches wide at 300 with 6.4 inches. And that's pretty you know, accurate. Let me go ahead and pull the calculator back up here. So let's say 6.4 inches wide or actually long times 300 1920 so there you go that's the whole explanation for this right here this just basically gives you an idea of what your pixel density will be when you need it for print so if you're using pixels forget about resolution it should be grayed out if you're choosing centimeters, yes, yeah, going to list it in centimeters, but the centimeters and inches are still physical measurements, you know. And resolution is only used when choosing inches or centimeters. The rest of the time, the computer absolutely omits it and doesn't even pay attention to it. So let's go back to our dimensions here. And Let's say our file here is, you know, yeah, go back up here to width and height, it makes some better, because it actually tells you here, you know, width and height. Let's say, you know, we wanted 6.4 there, and the height on this thing should be roughly, let's say, 8 by 6. Okay, at 8 by 6, at your standard 240, which is kind of low for print quality, 240 is kind of low, it's acceptable, but you would probably want something a little bit better. 480 is, or 720 is actually pretty ideal. Some printers, uh, photo printers print much higher, but your average, say, like, you know, color, you know, photo, uh, actually even photo, but your average printer, say for documents and stuff, prints out about 480 to 720. So even your cheap printers can still print out much higher than 240. So we go over here and we're looking at this, 800, you know, 8 inches by 6 inches, which is, you know, 2 by 3 ratio. Say 2, I think it is, yeah. Or 4 by 6, excuse me. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> This one should be 8. This one should be 12. Yeah. For 2 by 3 ratio, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I had it confused. I actually don't use the width and height that much anymore because when I pull the print out, I'll go over here to the print module and use that. We'll just give you an idea here. Let's say 12 inches times 8 inches equals 96 square inches. You can say 96 times 240 equals you know, 23 megabit file. Okay, now let's jack this up to 300. And let's say again 96 times 300. 28 megabit. And of course if we go you know, higher, say 600, it's going to double. So that that gives you an idea on this image size. I hope it clears up the image sizing de debate because a lot of people are like, what resolution should I use if I'm using, you know, dimensions of water or at pixels wide? 
well, if you're going pixels, you know, then that's one thing. Even with the height of pixels, you know, resolution is not used. It's only used in inches or centimeters. So, for the most part, if you're using your know, width and height, or I well, do long edge, because I already know the aspect ratio, uh, re yeah, that ratio of the uh, photo here, like mine's two by three, you know, standard right out of this off the sensor, then I automatically know if I want to use, you know, 1920, that it's always going to be 1920. Now, for this uh, particular image, I'm leaving it at full size. And as you see, everything is grayed out here, and resolution should be grayed out also. This is totally absurd for this to even be listed. Now, you have some sharpening options also here screen, matte, glossy paper. I don't really use those, I always leave mine just for screen amount, you know, standard. But honestly, most of the time, I turn it off. All my sharpening, the way I want it done, is already done anyway. When I uh, do post-processing. Metadata, include all metadata. I want all the metadata left back in the file. You know, it tells about the dimensions, the crop, the camera, you know, used. You know, I don't care if people have the information. I do have remove location information. Although most of my files don't have any GPS, you know, information in them. So it's not used really anyway that's just kind of a bit of privacy by still allowing you to have your copyright information in like seen over here on your side watermark you still got your, you know, your watermarking and everything I've actually got to go back and re-add this and I had a video on watermarks so if you want to learn more about watermarks then I'll put a link to the other uh, video for that so I won't go ahead and, back and recover this but since I'm exporting this to go on a DeviantArt, I'm not including the watermark in this photo because when I go to sell that photo for print or anything, anything I put on the image now will be there. DeviantArt has their already, you know, a lot of people hate it. I'm not just, you know, watermark system. But it prevents people from just blatantly copying. And it's great for when they print stuff or if I sell the uh, image out as a digital copy, then Deviance Art watermark is not included. And I really don't do any uh, extra post processing. Uh, that's wasted. And watermarks use a little bit. Metadata is hardly. Most of this is turned off. Video, I don't export videos from this. As I think, you know, Lightroom for video is just, you know, retarded. That's not used. But. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click export and we're going to export our file. And you can see extra photography 2014-11-10 which is today. All right, and let's, let's minimize this. Now here it is my photo uh, tutorial folder. And here's my 7.2 megabyte file. Or 2 megabyte file, excuse me. And there it is. Now I have this ready to put up on DeviantArt which you can be, uh, if you tune into the next uh, video tutorial for next week, I'll be actually showing you how to put these, uh, a file on DeviantArt and sell your prints and stuff from there and make money with your photos without having to get into a big, huge business ordeal with anybody. And since I like DeviantArt, since it's more flexible than most other photo websites, you know, be sure to check out that uh, video tutorial. Until next week, thanks everyone. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button down below at the bottom. Also, don't forget to leave comments. I always look forward to everyone's comments on knowing what you like about the video and what I can do to improve them. But most importantly, if you like this type of video and enjoy this type of content, you know, hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is the best way to let me know that you like these videos and you want to see more. And when we get done, you know, hit the button and check out my website. If you want to learn more about X-Disc Photography, the blog website is the best place to go. Thanks everyone.